your family if they don't have their iPod buds in their ears, then you need to literally listen up. Hearing loss is on the rise. Audiologist Dr. Marshall Chasen is here to tell us some surprising facts and surprising treatments. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good morning. How widespread is this issue of hearing loss because of the technology we're using? I would say that <clears throat> approximately, <clears throat> pardon me, but one in five, 20 percent of people do have some beginnings of a hearing loss caused by MP3 players, but before that it was CD players in the 90s and even Walkmans in the 80s. Mm -hmm. This is before you were born. <laughs> um, but I think there are some people, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, about 30 percent of people, especially in the young category, between 18 and 34, your category, yes, um, would have about uh, would have a very significant problem with it. They would listen to their MP3 player for long hours a day at a very high volume, almost addictively. Mm -hmm. Now, is it only a problem if you're inserting things in your ears, or what are other sources of that kind of bad noise? Well, uh, music is not necessarily bad noise, but it's not necessarily being in the ear either. Mm -hmm. You can go to a rock concert, and the ear doesn't know whether whether the sound is coming from a loudspeaker 30 feet away or an earphone in your ear. The danger with the earphones is that it's portable and you can then take it out onto the street, you turn up the volume over the background noise, over the trucks and everything and therein lies the difficulty. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine also since it's mobile we're taking them and using them more often than we used to. That is true. Certainly in the 1980s and 1990s we were constrained to uh, cassettes or CDs that lasted maybe 30-40 minutes mm -hmm. but with MPs, MP3 players they can have a song list that can go on for hours and hours and hours. And it's not just the duration, it's not just listening, but it's the combination of the two. Uh -huh. For example, there's something called the 80-90 rule, I tell everyone. What is that? 80% volume on your iPod or MP3 for 90 minutes a day, hour and a half a day, is perfectly safe. Your okay. favorite song comes on, turn up the volume, enjoy it thoroughly, just turn it down to below 80% volume for that long time. If you are going to listen to a longer time, or you're going to go to a rock concert or any concert, just don't mow your lawn the next day. So there's a, like a duration aspect as well. Ah. Moderation. Okay. So 80, 90, that's a good rule. But then how do you know if you are in early onset or if you already have a problem? Do you have to wait until people have to repeat things to you? Good question. Uh, it would be, in some sense, from an educational point of view, nicer if we damaged our hearing, blood gushed out of our ears. Mm -hmm. But it, thankfully, or not thankfully, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, so there are some subtle things that can be done. You might feel a ringing or buzzing in the ears, a feeling of numbness. Here's a strategy a lot of people do. When they are about to go to a noisy activity, a rock concert, any concert for that matter, they're driving down, they adjust the radio to usually an all-talk station. and reduce the volume such that they can still hear it but they have to strain to hear it. Okay. Turn off the engine. Go to the concert, come back, turn on the engine of the car and if you cannot hear comfortably that same uh, all talk radio you have what we call a temporary hearing loss. Enough of this temporary hearing loss though and it does become permanent. Oh my, so how long would you have to sustain a temporary hearing loss or how frequently would you have to experience that before you should really really go see somebody? Well uh, if this happens more than once a month mm. it's worth while seeing an audiologist for an assessment. Hearing loss is very subtle, very gradual. It usually starts in the higher pitches of the piano keyboard and only later does it get into where the speech or music range. But there are some things that can be done with MP3 players to make them safe, other than moderation. Okay, let's uh, see. These are some earphones. I stole off my son who's at home sleeping so he's not missing them. <laughs> okay. Um, and these are specialized earphones that are called isolator earphones. We're actually made a custom mold of his ear. Uh -huh. And this cuts off the background noises so that when he puts them in and goes out onto the street, he doesn't have to turn up the volume when a truck passes by. So you're not adjusting the volume to compensate for other noise? Precisely. They isolate you from the environment. But if you're going to use this, mm -hmm. be careful for the truck coming up behind you because you're isolated from there as well. Well, it seems that's a tricky situation. It is. There, there are some things that can be done generally, though, other than moderation, which is common sense. Okay. Another one is do your push ups. Uh, turn. This, I'm going to stop you right there. How on earth does exercise help you? Can you exercise your ears? What's the connection? I don't understand. Well, it's not exercising the muscles in the ear, but when you have a good cardiovascular system, when you do exercise, more oxygen is getting to your inner ear where the damage occurs. It makes it less susceptible to damage. In fact, recent research has shown that if you compare couch potatoes mm -hmm. to people that are physically very, very fit in their 60s and 70s, those 60 and 70-year-olds have much better hearing than those that are couch potatoes. 
those. So there's nothing wrong with listening to a lot of music, just do your push-ups, take karate, do whatever it takes to, to become physically fit. Uh, I, another aspect along the same line is smoking. There's a lot wrong with smoking. Don't smoke, guys. Okay, uh, okay. But, but if you're going to be smoking, it happens. Every cigarette, I think we can awfully, uh, say approximately every cigarette is worth 10 push-ups. So if you're going to be stupid enough to smoke, Fine smoke, but do your push-ups. Okay, so the smoking is interfering with the circulation. It's not like don't blow your smoke into somebody's ear, right? It, it, <laughs> exactly. It's the same rationale. Less oxygen is getting to your inner ear. It's less healthy. It's more susceptible to damage. Okay. Now, you're a parent yourself. You said it, you've stolen these items from your very own son. For parents who are watching who know that their kids are addicted to having the technology right up against their heads, right into their ears, what can you say to them? Well, part of it is moderation. I mean, just to inform them that there's nothing wrong with listening to loud music. Mm -hmm. Just give them the 89 you rule as a rule of thumb. Okay. Uh, if you're going to listen to a loud uh, event, don't mow your lawn the next day or get someone else to do it for you. Oh, the kids uh, mow the lawn, eh? Don't cut back on mowing the lawn for your parents. Where can we quickly get these, though, to get these custom uh, Any audiologist can make them. I made them of my son, and any audiologist can make them. Uh, and uh, they're, they're almost the cost of, of the earphone itself, so they can be expensive. But in the long term, though, it's a much better sound. It's a f good fidelity sound, mm -hmm. but also it's a safer sound. It's listened at a much lower level. And I would imagine maybe adults who've had a couple of concerts under their belts, they could use this too. I think so. Thanks so much, Dr. Chasen. For Thank more you. information, musiciansclinics.com is where you can go. Those are great tips. Now, here are some events taking place around the city. Listen carefully. <laughs>